Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me Fujit and this is my first video of 2023 so first and foremost happy new year to each and every one of you. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas and New Year break for those of you who live in countries that have that. Anyway, without further ado, the idea behind this video is it is the final week of the auction. And I thought I would tell you my top five picks. Those top five tanks that I think you should be given some consideration to. There are still quite a lot of tanks to grab in the auction. So without any further ado, let's jump in and see which tanks I think you should be looking at and why you should be looking at them. As I said, there are still quite a few tanks out there that you can grab your paws on, but I would argue that not all of them are worth a look at. Coming in at number five for me is this little tier 7 TD, the Krupp Steyr Waffenträger. Now, there's only 876 of these tanks left, and it's going currently for 5,500 gold, but it is due to drop in about six and a half hours or so to that of 5,000. But why is it worth a look, especially when it's a tier, a tier 7? You may be thinking, food it is a bit pricey for a tier 7. Yeah, admittedly, 5,500 is a little bit pricey for a tier 7 TD. But once it gets to 5,000, guys, it starts wetting people's appetite. Why? Well, it's a nice little tank. It's a bit of a gem in the rough. But don't take my word for it. Let's have a look at a replay. So here we go, rolling out on the little Krupsteyr, the tier 7 German TD. Now, a couple of things. Firstly, this one is an autoloader. It's got three shells in that magazine. It has got a great turn of mobility. It is very small and very squat, but uh, to get that speed and mobility, guys, it's got no armor, and you need to be mindful of that. So what has this tank got going for it? Well, firstly, it's the only three-clip German autoloader, TD. That's number one. So that's an interesting take automatically. Secondly, it's a great little credit earner. Thirdly, it's got the renowned German accuracy precision gun. It's a beautiful gun. It's got a pretty decent reload, it's pretty accurate, and it dishes out pretty decent damage. Not per shot, but overall burst damage is absolutely lovely. And the thing about this tank, you can get it into positions like this relatively quickly, and then just farm till your little heart is content. And already, we've, we've done 700 damage. Already. Boom. Just like that. Okay. And we've only emptied two shells because the first shell we missed. Here comes the little AMX. Bless him. And he's going to feel the wrath of the Krupp Steyr. And boy, does he feel it. And before you know it, he is deleted. And he's back in the garage. And we're happy losing a little bit of hit points. But we have 1,200 damage. And we have a kill under our belt. This is why I love this tank. It is an absolutely beautiful little tier 7 TD. However, there lies the downside. It's a tier 7. And not everybody is going to be rolling out in tier 7s, especially when you've got annihilators that will rip this thing apart and smashes, which will one-shot it to oblivion. However, it is a nice little tank. The reason it's in my list, the reason it's at number five, is because of the price, to be fair, and the fact it's an autoloader, and it's the only autoloader that you're going to get in the German TD line. So that is why it makes my list. Once it gets down to that 5,000 mark, you should be looking at it, especially if you like your little TDs, and you like rolling out in tier seven, and you like earning a little bit of creditos, because this one will allow you to do all those things, and it will put a smile on your face. Believe me, it's a fun little tank to play around with. Think likes of the cockroach, and you're getting the point. So the Krupp Steyr Waffentrager, of which there are only 873 left at 5,500 currently, is my number five pick, my last pick. So what comes in at number four? Well, no, it's not the Lycan at 6,500, heaven forbid. It's actually the Kampfpanzer 70, the tier nine German Heavy. Now there are 2,227 of these left. It's 
currently going for 9,000, which I agree is a bit pricey, especially for this tank, because it is quite old. But the next price drop in just over six hours, well, six and a half hours, is going down to 8,000. Then it starts to whet my appetite. Because don't forget, you're getting a tier nine heavy for 8,000 gold, and you'll get some of the tier eight tanks in the auction at the moment for more than that. Think Progetto, currently just over 9,200. So this one is worth it. However, it comes with a pretty big caveat, and we're gonna jump into a replay so I can explain that caveat. Now, I'm the first to admit, the Camp 70 is not a tank for everybody. This is not a noob-friendly tank, okay? So if you're one of those players who's only got a couple of hundred battles under his belt, uh, and you're struggling with your win rate, this is not the tank for you. This is what I term a finesse tank. It has more problems that you have to be able to combat and overcome to make this tank work effectively. Look, it's got a pretty decent gun. It's got massively great alpha damage, as you will see here. I mean, this thing's churning out 550 top-end alpha every time you press the fire button. However, it's got an excessively long reload, and I mean excessively long for a heavy tank. And it's got pretty dubious hull armor. In fact, when I say dubious hull armor, I mean zero hull armor. Uh, it's got trolley turret armor, which is very nice. But you've got to be careful with it. You've got to understand that this one has a big vulnerability. What with that reload? The reload is a killer. And this is what makes this tank very, very tricky. Coming in at 16 seconds for a reload, a lot of people are going to struggle with this one. Okay, it's, as I said, it's not a noob-friendly tier 9. But it is a tier 9, and it is a nice tank. And if you can get to grips with this one, you can understand it, you will easily knock out over 2.5k damage every game that you happen to play in. I mean, okay... Some of those games are going to be team dependent. I mean, you, you may get a Muppet team and you may do next to nothing. But on average, you should be knocking out over 2k damage in this thing. And it's certainly got the capability of doing that. The thing is, as I said, it's big, big, big weakness is that reload. And if you put it in the wrong place, you are really going to get hurt. It doesn't overly struggle with its penetration doesn't struggle at all with its alpha damage its alpha damage is beautiful doesn't really have any gun depression to mention but it's a lovely tank and the thing the reason i've got this one at number four is because firstly it's tier nine okay and you're getting tier nine for effectively eight thousand gold if you can wait and you're getting a good heavy tier nine at that a pretty accurate German tank, a tank that is comfortable in tier 10, not just in tier 9 and tier 8, and if a tank that if you know how to play it, if you know its weaknesses, and you can play it to those weaknesses, you will have a shed load of fun in. It's not the easiest, I agree. It's not a simple tank to get to grips with. But once you know it, you will you will roll out in this thing and you'll be like, wow, this is such a fantastic tank. Why didn't I get this before? And if you haven't got it in your garage already, once it gets that 8,000 gold, guys, it really should be wetting your appetite. I mean, don't forget, that's only like, what, 1,500 more expensive than a Louvre. Um, trust me, this is better than a Louvre. It's a beautiful little tank. Tricky, a finesse tank, requires a little bit of skill, it's not noob friendly in any shape or form, but nevertheless, a beautiful little tank at that. And for the right price, one you should really consider getting. We did 3.6k there. It's only a second class. Goes to show that the good players out there are really knocking a shed load of damage out in this thing because you can. And that is why it's number four on my list. So let's have a look at what comes in at number three. Ah, number three. Now some of you may be thinking that I'm gonna be picking a Progetto, which is there, look. The Progetto M35 Mod 46, of which there are 2,963, but I'm not. And there's a reason for that. At the moment, the price of this tank, being a tier eight tank, is 9,250, which I think is an obscene amount of gold. 
especially for this tank. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful tank. In the right hands, it's absolutely lovely. And it is due to drop to 8,500. But lots of people have got the Progetto already. Lots of people know how the Progetto works. And it, whilst it's a beautiful, beautiful tank, I think the price tag is just too much. So my number three is this tank, the Centurion Mark V-1. RAAC, that stands for Royal Australian Army Corps, by the way. Now there are 3,268 of these left, and it's currently going for 1,250 gold cheaper than the Progetto at an 8,000 gold, which I admit, is still a little bit pricey, considering that in a couple of hours, you, you know, in six and a half hours, you can get a uh, tier nine for 8K. This is a tier eight, and this is a medium. But it is due to drop to 7,500. And unlike the Progetto, where every man and his dog has that tank, this one doesn't come round as often as you would think. But let's have a look at how it plays and let's find out why I've stuck it there at number three on my list. Now again, pretty much like the Camp 70 that we've just seen, this one is not a noob-friendly tank. This tank is another what I like to term a finesse tank, requiring a little bit of understanding and a little bit of skill to play it. You will struggle in this one if you just want to rush out there, frontline it and stick it on harm's way. It is your stereotypical British type of tank, although this one is Australian. It has got pretty bad armour. It's got pretty bad alpha damage. But what does it have? Well, it has trolley turret brilliant mobility, uh, a very accurate gun, and an absolutely insane reload. I mean, the reload is like five seconds. So whilst you're only dishing out like 150, 160 alpha damage, you're doing that every five seconds. And the penetration on this tank's not too bad. So if you're landing those shots, then you don't need to knock out 500 because every five seconds you're knocking out 150. So every 10 seconds, 300. Every 20 seconds, 600. You can do a lot of harm in this thing. It's got fantastic gun depression. That's why it's got a troll armor on the turret. It's got great mobility. It is an ambush tank. It's a peak and boom type tank. This is a tank that slows down your gameplay, makes you understand the maps a lot more, and makes you increase your skill level because it takes knowledge and understanding of both the map and the tank to get this tank to operate effectively and make it sing and work for you. And if you can do that, oh, you are going to have one of the biggest smiles on your faces. You can see here, it is not struggling to pen this tier 9 tank in any way, shape or form. It's just having a barrel of fun. Okay, I've only knocked out 1700, but remember, you're not knocking out massive amounts of damage in this thing, but you're knocking it out a lot faster than lots of other tanks. I mean, five seconds on the reload. It's just mad. We're going to give that other tier 9 a hard time. Okay, we're going to get penned by the uh, by the T28 Defender, but we're going to get penned anyway. And the thing is, you've still got hit points. We can still manage this. It is, it is pretty thin, don't get me wrong, but it's a beautiful tank. It's a ridgeline fighter. It's a haul down beast. It's got great gun depression. And, and it is the only Australian tank in the game, number one. And number two, it's a really nice credit earner. So when this one's going for 7,500 gold compared to the Progetto that's going for 9,000 gold, this one is worth a look. This one is worth considering. This one doesn't come around that often. Okay, and when it does come around, if you like those British medium tanks, if you like those ridgeline fighters, if you like that haul down capability with good gun depression and fast reload, this is the tank for you. And you will have so much fun in it. You really, really will. So that's my number three pick. So what comes in at number two? And no, it ain't the Progetto. The Progetto, in fact, doesn't even make my list. Coming in at number two, for me, oh, this was a tough call, but my number one pick, well, it was pretty obvious which one that was going to be, for me at least. But coming in at number two is the Emil 1951. This is a beautiful tier eight heavy tank. There are 3,264 of these left. It's currently going for 8,800. That price will drop in six and a half hours to 8,100. And it's worth looking at. 
the chances are once it drops below 8,000, you really should be looking at this tank because it, it's a beautiful auto loading tier eight heavy tank. All right, it does have a contemporary in the tech tree with the Emil, but this one I just think you know, just tops that one a little bit. Both tanks are stonkingly good. If you don't like the Emil, you're not gonna like this, the premium version of it. But if you're one of those who likes, you know, those little European tanks that can get around the battlefield and churn out a lot of damage, you're gonna love this tank. But let's have a look at a replay. Let's see how it actually looks in practice. So here we are in the Emil 51, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, the opening of this game is pretty pants, and I'm not gonna show the tank in a good light, and you're gonna sit to me and say, oh, Fuji, why are you showing this replay? It's absolutely pants, you, you're a complete idiot. Um, you're showing the tank that it's pants, it's not very good, everybody can pen it from everywhere on the map. No, I just played like a muppet, and I put it in the wrong position, and I realized my the error of my ways, and I moved. So I've lost half my hit points, mainly because of me, not because of anything else. Uh, that prompts me to move, which I'm going to do. And believe me, this little 1951 Emil is going to grow into this game. And you are gonna see the virtues of this tank. And I'm gonna bestow upon you, hopefully, why, the reasons why you should be looking at getting this little tier eight uh, heavy tank into your garage. Although, not at the moment. Wait for the price to come down. And it will. There's still plenty of them left. Hello, Emil. Goodbye, Stuart Emil. Thank you for playing. It was lovely to meet you. So, it's got pretty decent mobility. It doesn't have the super speed boost that its tech tree counterpart has, I admit. It is an auto loader. And it's not a bad uh, load time, to be honest with you. Pretty decent armor, especially on the turret, as you would expect, pretty much like its tech tree counterpart. So why do I prefer this one over its tech tree? I mean, why should you get this if you've got the tech tree version? Well, I think the gun is slightly better on this one. It's got slightly better, I th it, it's just my perception, slightly better accuracy, slightly better reload, and slightly better damage, or so it would appear. I mean, it's it's semantics it's just what i think now i know some people out there don't particularly like this tank they say well there's no point in it what's the point there's a tech tree version that's equally as good and i can't generally argue against that there is a tech tree version that is equally as good however i play this one more than i play the tech tree version and there's a reason for that because i think this one is just that a little bit better than the tech tree version Okay, that's why this one's played more in my garage than its tech tree counterpart. I mean, look at the accuracy of this gun, it's just amazing! And the mobility, even without the super speed boost, is still pretty nice. It's got a pretty decent view range, pretty good spotting ability for a heavy tank, pretty good mobility for a heavy tank. It's got, the, as I said, the stereotypical stonking turret armor, so pretty decent gun depression, as you would expect from an Emil class of tank. And, you know, it's got the ability to shine. Look, we haven't set the world on fire. We've done 674 damage here. There's nothing we lost half our hit points. You're thinking, yeah, it's still a crap replay. However, the Emil will grow, as I said, into this game. And boom, there goes one shot. And boom, there goes another shot. And then boom, just for the final. Boom, there, there we go. From 600 to 1500 in one easy movement. That is why I love this tank you have the ability to do that okay so i generally find that this tank is pretty easy to churn out between two to two and a half k damage every game okay you're not going to struggle to get the damage out on this tank believe me and it's relatively noob friendly as long as you remember that it is really a haul down beast that needs to be on a little bit of a rise. You know, protecting that lower hull and using the gun depression and the turret armor. Hello, IS-5. Goodbye, IS-5. Thank you for playing. You are a worthy opponent. Already we're up to 1900 and the game is not over yet. And this is what the Emil brings to the table. It is a versatile little heavy. Okay, and as I said, and I can't, re I can't really say this enough, 
Unlike the Cam 70, another heavy tank, this one is incredibly noob friendly. You know, if you haven't got a very high win rate and you haven't got very many battles under your belt, then you can't really go too far wrong in this one as long as you don't stick it out on the front line on top of a ridge. If you do that, then you deserve to be punished. If you can stick it behind something, like a little rise, you can use it to under pressure, and you can play it more like a second line attack vehicle rather than up front, up close and personal, you will find this tank will just sing to its heart's content and give a big massive smile to you and put it on your face. And that's why I love this tank. It has the ability to do that. And the, the idea of the game is to have fun. The idea of the game is to learn. And this tank allows you to do all of those things. Hello 45 dB, we're gonna track you and then we're gonna hit you again. And then we're gonna hit you for a final time. And there we go. Close to 3K damage. As I said, this one is easy to get the damage out of. And considering that the first part of the game was pretty pants, I'm pretty happy with that because that is what this Emil can do. As I say, it can change games. It can turn games around. That is why I love it. That is why it's my number two pick. I agree, it's not gonna be for everybody, but the price is right, or it will be, and you're getting a decent tank for not a lot of gold. That is the main thing. And that is why it's above the Progetto, which is far too pricey. We've seen all of them now up to number one. So what comes in at number one? Surely it's not the Progetto or the Titans or even the Lycan. No, it's none of those. Let's have a look. My number one pick is no, not the Titan 54D and no, not the Progetto M5. It is the AMX CDA 105, the French Tier 8 TD. Currently 3,208 of these going up for grabs and the price tag at 7,750 with the next price drop at 7,000. This one really should whet your appetite and make you yeah, rub your hands with glee thinking I can get this tank which some would say is slightly broken, some would say is slightly OP. I on the other hand will say it's just fantastically, um, superbly strong. This one is going for a song. It is one of the best, If I think this is the best tank you can get your hands on in this auction now. Okay, simple as that. Um, it's noob friendly and it's just bloody brilliant. Let's have a look at it in a replay. Let's find out why I rate this one above all the others. Okay, so this is the second TD to make my list, but this one deserves its top spot, I think. It may not be for everybody's cup of tea, but look, Look at the pros of this tank. One, it's tiny. It, it, it really is a squat tank. Two, it's got fantastic mobility. Three, it's got great penetration. Four, it's got brilliant alpha damage. Five, it's got fantastic mobility. And six, it's got an absolutely crazy armor profile. I mean, this thing, is, is mad, especially frontally. You wiggle it, you jiggle it, you stick it in the right place, it's gonna have, you know, lots of players are gonna have trouble trying to pen it. The other thing it's got, strangely enough, is pretty decent gun depression. You can put this on a ridge line and you can use that gun depression to harass your enemy. I mean, we've already done a thousand damage and we're only a minute and a half into the game, okay? We haven't really moved that far. And there's its counterpart, the uh, the Chinese WZ120, which everybody loves. This thing is head and shoulders, I think, better than that tank. This tank is just a beaut. I mean, look at this for a shot. I mean, it's knocking out 340, 350 damage per shot. You cannot go wrong that much in this tank. Again, I've lost a shed load of hit points because I put myself side on and the Chimera hit me and so did the Defender. But like the last game, this tank will grow into this game and it will grow lovely. I mean, look at this for a shot. I mean, another 383 into the side of a Chimera and I've got a stonkingly stupid reload. I mean, it's eight seconds. Well, seven seconds, actually. I mean, that is just mad death for the amount of damage this thing churns out. I mean, seven seconds and you're churning out 350 damage every seven seconds. I mean, that's mad. It's beautiful and it's got great mobility and it's everything you could ever wish for in a tank. Now, look, I get that you may not play this one that much. 
uh, okay, it's not going to be overused, probably like the Progetto would be, or tanks like that. But the thing about this one is that it's going for 7,500. It's almost 2,000 gold cheaper than the Progetto, and it will drop to 7,000, okay? And you're going to get an absolutely stonkingly great tank in Tier 8 that can bounce a Smasher, just like that, and then can push forward with its mobility and harry this smasher and say goodbye smasher you're not as op as you think little tank this one is stronger to an extent just shy of 3k damage you know halfway through the game just shy of 3k damage and another bounce we've bounced 1300 we've dissed out 2800 we've taken one kill admittedly only one kill but what a fantastic time we've had in this little French TD. This one is a bargain at 7,700 gold. Believe me, when you consider that there are tanks like the Titan. I mean, the Titan. Oh, my life. That's going for 7,000. <laughs> yeah, I know. The Titan HND. Not a great tank. That's going for 7,000 gold. This is only 750 gold gold more expensive and it's a better tank and believe me this tank will put a massive smile on your face this is the gem in this auction this is for the price an absolutely crazy tank it borderline broken borderline op i don't like saying those terms to me it's just incredibly strong it's got everything going for it and that is why I love it. We end up doing 3.2k. It's only a second class. You go to think how much damage people are churning out there to, to get, you know, those masteries. It's also a great credit earner. And I love this tank, which is why it is the number one pick for me in the final week of this auction. That's just my call. You may disagree. So that is my top five of what's left in the auction. I would consider seriously, you know, the Steyr. I would seriously consider the Camp 70. I would consider the Centurion, the Emil 51, and most definitely the CDA. Georgie asked me the other day, my kid, you know, which one would I buy? And I said to him, buy the CDA because you're just going to love it. It's a fantastic tank. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my take on the final week of the auction. By all means, I may not be right. You may have different views and opinions. Share them with me. Comment and everything below because that's the whole idea of this, isn't it? It's a two-way street, guys. You're not just there to listen to me harp on. You're meant to sort of give some feedback also. Anyway, that's been my top five pick. I hope you agree with them. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Love to hear from you all. And until the next time, remember the auction final week. Price drop in about six hours. Do your best to get a, a, you know, a decent tank, guys, because there are some out there. There aren't many left, but there are some decent ones out there. And until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.